How are you? Hi there. Good, good, thank you. Um, I'm not trying to be flippant about this, but the problems that Lyle has had to go through and is yeah. now playing again, is that going to work for you? Because tomorrow night's another night for him to get another game. He scored against Villa. He's an extremely good player. He's, you know, he's a great find for you guys. What can he help you achieve and actually what can he achieve down the line? Um, it's a difficult question because of what he's had to go through. I think he... He, what what is for sure shown in the little time he's played in the Premier League is that he's made for this league. You know, I think that's clear. What level in this league is is difficult to assess, and I use I usually look at because sometimes we forget about how high the bar has been set now in the Premier League. I, I don't think it's ever been this high. So, for example, teams like Bournemouth have got Solanke up front who, you know, Everton's got Calvert-Lewin up front and, and, and they're kind of the teams who are at the moment just above relegation. That's the standard of, of strikers in this league. Like, we can't forget that. But has he got the potential? I think he's shown definitely that it does. But I don't know whether the priority for him right now is anything other than being happy and playing. And, and that's what transpires, I think, on the pitch. How bigger responsibility do you feel now because you talked about it before about he wasn't going to go to the Alcorn Cup for the reasons you explained which is cool but now that he's playing again regularly what responsibility do you think that you carry for him to, to make him happier and to make him that player you think he might be yeah so, so it, it's still part it's still very closely followed we have I don't know we we it started with his with day one, with its with his, with his three or four weeks re, uh, plan, now he's got, I think, an eight-week eight, eight week plan going forward as well. So he's still being closely monitored at the moment. And it's nothing... I think you have to look at it like an, like an injury a little bit and return to injury. And he's every positive sign we wanted to see. And that's the best thing for us we've, we've seen. Um, everything he's had to do, he's done brilliantly, and and now we we just have to keep him on that path. But he's still getting day to day, um, how would I say, um, follow up treatment, and until a point where, of course, the goal is to um, to have him just live a normal life, you know. But but he will get there. It's a big responsibility in a sense for you, though, as his manager, um, I guess, because some lesser principled people than yourself might just use him and to hell with him and to hell with his emotional state. When you talk about it could be it could be an injury, some managers just use players whatever for their own ends. But I, I get the impression for people you'd never do that with Lyle. No, we we but we've you know, I think we've proven how we've reacted as a club. You know, we 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 have had as well to suffer I don't I don't not real suffering but you know what I mean like we've our best play or number nine was gone you know and and I don't think there's anyone at the club that's had a, a second thought about what was the right thing to do here and again if if people want to understand why this club is different is because of in moments like this we have absolute unity within the club we there wasn't a person that came in and said well maybe oh careful what what are the implications of because it could affect his value as well. Um, but nobody cares. We we did what is right by the player. We will continue to do so for him and every other player we have. And right now, we we have to sometimes suffer short-term consequences, but which are never worse than the player himself, of course. But on the long term, we'll always we'll always be better because of it. And 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 that we're very clear in that. Thank you. Very uh, maybe. Maybe a bit crass, but if we could just separate the mental health problem. But, but in terms of his actual form in the pitch, he seems to be getting better with every game and scored a good goal at, uh, at yeah. Villa. Where, 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 how do you assess where he is now and what, what he's still got to do? But but this is this is a, the um, I, I, and I'm only so open about this because obviously he's 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 he's, he's fine with it being you know he's publicly discussed it. But the 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 thing what people have to understand is so. He was good before, right? He was good before. 
but he was playing with a massive weight on his shoulders before that you know so us going through the process with him and him being what he's shown now i don't even think he's at full fitness yet and 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 but just having the weight of your shoulders just being free to play you know that's why his performances are now even of another level you know there's it's there's no coincidence there's a reason for that and it's the fact that he was uh, perhaps not playing with an injury that was visible to people but he was playing with a burden and and I think it goes for everyone in life you know unless you find the methods and you you build up the tools to deal with it um you basically always um you never you never able to to perform at full capacity never and and he's hopefully on a path where he'll be able to unlock everything he's got you know uh, Frank, could you just ask you about James Trafford because he's come in and it's been hard because he can see a lot of goals, but his performance levels seem to have been doing that and he's shown a real maturity for such a young player in his first season in the Premier League. What, what's your assessment of where he's at and what he can do? Yeah, I think he has won. I, I, I don't think I, I, me personally, I'm saying anything new when I speak about the fact that he's a talented player because he was... We spotted way before he, he signed for us. You know, I think he's he's always been a a name or a play to to look out for in even in the youth, uh, um, even when he was in the younger age groups. But I think what is promising with him is um, that he's unfaced, unfaced by mistakes, unfaced by good games, bad games. He's he's on a pathway that's is very cl very calm, um, very mature for his age. And um, for me, I, I I like that type of personality because it sh it shows growth. You can you can basically you can trust that a person will keep improving. Um, but like like I said before as well, like every other Premier League team, we're, we're very fortunate to have two good goalkeepers, and and you need that. Hi, Vinny. Um, just on on the theme of developments, um, obviously when you lost Luca. Uh, gave the opportunity for others to to step up, and yeah. and Wilson and Mike have sort of been two of those who've who've sort of played in in his position. Both of them arrived sort of later in the summer and didn't necessarily have, I guess, the full preseason. Would you are you pleased with the the progress that they're making now that they're getting more game time and, and getting more minutes on the pitch? Yeah, and I can, uh, but I can see I can see that from the entire team. That's why I I'm relatively. You know, I, I, I know what the reality of the points is, I know what the reality of the league is and whether we'll get there in time or not, you know, that's that's it's for us to, to, to try and deliver. Um, but I'm rel relative, relatively optimistic because I do see players who are um, much, much further ahead than where they were three, four months ago. And that's, that's the biggest job for me as a coach is to get them forward. Um, and someone like uh, Mikey has shown obviously spells of talent, but someone like Wilson as well. And uh, Wilson's only 19, um, but he, he doesn't play like a 19-year-old kid. It's like you've got a few players who are young in this league, not many, but uh, it's tough to earn a spot in this league at that age. And 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 he he looks like a player who can who can do that. So, but the positive side of these players is if they do progress, they can always put us. Adam, to, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beginner's mistake, that. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in the old days you wouldn't have a phone. <laughs> but um, so to now I'm from a younger generation. You'd have older managers who get really uptight about this. I'm from a younger generation. I, <laughs> you know, I could deal with stuff. Um, uh, so just going back to, to, to what I was saying is um, the, the only thing that's good is if, if you look at the rate of improvement of all these players you've, not, you've mentioned over the last three months, the guarantee you have with these players is if they stay in a stable mindset is that they're going to improve even quicker and, and they're going to continue to improve and get better. And that's an exciting prospect as a manager because the team where it is now is still got a lot of room to improve before now and the end of the season and we've been close to results we've been really really close many times now um, I hope that 
scoring two goals will be matched with not conceding, you know, and not conceding will be matched with scoring a goal. Uh, that's that's where that's the finer margin what we're talking about. But these players are all making the steps and they've got output. So these guys are um, having assists and goals and and hopefully and I'm sure they're going to continue to do so. And just one more on just in terms of the transfer window, it, have you found it has it been a little bit more difficult given the situation that you're in, like league table from an outside perspective, looking at maybe players that you might want. Has it, has it been difficult in that sense about, you know, t convincing players that you should come to Burnley even though when they might look at the league table, they may have a, a certain perception? No, not for us. Like if, if, um, if financially it makes sense, I always feel we're able to convince players to come to the club. And, and you know, it's, um, I, I think it's... It's one of these clubs, once you get to know it, you understand that it's different. You know, we, 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 we put so much emphasis on, on, on players and, the, and their development and their improvement. No matter the age, it's not about being young or, or, or old. And, and, and it's a really good environment that, you know, players would want to play in. So that's not been difficult, um, but, but it has to make financially sense. That's the difficulty. Okay, okay. Uh, Vinny, you, you were linked with Tottenham last summer. Um, I don't know whether that was just paper talk or how far it went. Were you no, it wasn't. <laughs> were you <f> <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> you, you have more information then. <laughs> were you flattered or did you make it quite clear you were staying here for the project right from the offset? No, I didn't, I didn't speak that? about it. That was my tactic. Uh, you can call it a tactic. I, I've had to, th to think about it before I become a manager. How am I going to handle these questions? Mm -hmm. Sacking or new job? And, and it's very close to each other as, as we're all witnessing, right? But, um, but just ignore it. Just ignore the, the chat. Continue with, with what I'm doing and, and, uh, and focus on what I've got my hands on. And it's this group of players. There was no formal ap approach or discussion. No, but the thing, the thing is... Like, it's how I function. If anything was to happen, the first person I would speak to was the chairman. Mm -hmm. And he would know all the ins and outs of what, whether there was an approach, not an approach. So I feel that's a person I have a duty to, to, yeah. to report to. And then the rest, it doesn't consume a second of my thoughts. The only thing I, I'm focused on is this group, these players. These, um, there's also a level of, of, of respect, I think, that they deserve. Um, that goes beyond that, you know. Um, and, and as well, I've, I'm a young manager, but I feel I've been in this game. I'm like a dinosaur almost, you know, that's how long I've, I've you know, but that's how long I know the dance and all this kind of stuff. It, it, it bores me. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm not a part of that. What excites me when I wake up in the morning is, despite the points, I wake up in the morning and I'm like, I can, I can, I can, I can make my players better. I can make this team stay in the Premier League. And beyond that, I can make this team be a good team in the Premier League. That's my. That's the only thing that wakes me up. Everything else is um, totally ir irrelevant. And you'd be surprised. I'll even anticipate saying that even scenarios where it doesn't go well this year, still then my goal doesn't change. And that's what I'm focused on. The only thing. So just, just yeah. A quick one on Sorry. the if I can squeeze one about the FA Cup. Of course, it will mean an awful lot to you. It's the first trophy that City had won. For 35 years. Probably yeah, and it was my last game as well in English football. Oh, the 2019 final. Yeah. 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 So, Not is it. <laughs> no, it was the. <laughs> if I describe it, honestly, it was like a fairy tale mm. because um, I've kind of lined that up to talk about something positive, right? But um, <laughs> no. Um, no, because obviously the two games before uh, the, the that year we won the, the the league cup and then we won the um, Premier League, but then my last game was that game in English football and I knew it. Um, so when it's four nil and you see whoever it is Bernardo Silva, Kevin De Bruyne, and they're just they're just keeping the ball themselves and they're just doing mm. this, you get to kind of see how big the stadium is for once and yeah, you get and to enjoy, enjoy the yeah. flags and. And you get to have almost like a fan's experience whilst being in the middle of the pitch. And, and I don't think that's been given to many people, you know. I got to have a chat with Troy Deeney during the game, you know, like almost saying goodbye to each other. That, <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's the type of day it was. Um, so, yeah, no, 6-0, it works manager, well. Disrespect it, you, you treat the competition seriously, you know. Yeah, always. Well, every competition, yeah, always.
I it's um there's there's always there's always um an idea about I don't think I know many anyway, I wouldn't understand it, but there's always an idea about cup for me cup competition is is it doesn't matter, it's not the Premier League. Financially it means something different of course. But I, I hope I I wanna see our team do well and the only thing you don't do in cup competitions is maybe take unnecessary risk. You know that that's maybe where where you draw a line. But other than that, you you try and um, do do the most you can to to have a have a moment, have a journey in, in this competition. Okay, thank you very much. Cheers. Thank, thank you. Everyone.